Bruno, tenho 24 anos e hoje eu vou procurar emprego aqui em Queenstown. <risos> Você acha que tá frio? Tá zero grau agora. Hoje eu tenho uma reunião com uma pessoa muito importante. Ele é o responsável por promover Queenstown como um study destination, ou seja, como destino para as pessoas virem aqui e aprender inglês. Se tem uma pessoa que sabe sobre as escolas aqui e as oportunidades que a cidade oferece, é esse cara. Então galera, esse daqui é o Aaron. Ele é o responsável pela Study Queenstown aqui. Agora a gente vai fazer algumas perguntas para eles para esclarecer algumas dúvidas de vocês. Right? Yeah. How many students we have in Queenstown now? So current international students is about 1,800. Why do you think Queenstown is like a great city for students, international students? I think there's a few reasons. One is it's a beautiful place. It's a stunning place to come. Students love it because of the beautiful nature. Uh, it's very safe and you can get away from the city center in very short time, like 10 minutes, and you have, have nature to yourself, but you can have the hub and buzz of a central city. There's about 150 bars and cafes just right in a four blocks, right in central town, so it's mm -hmm. awesome. And uh, it's a very international place. So people love it because it's like the United Nations in one place. It's a very cool place to be. And what's the top five nationalities we have here? Brazil, Colombia, uh, Japan, Korea, and China. Can you just tell us a little bit more about like the quality of the education here in Queenstown? So one of our key selling points is we're not that large. So what we really focus on is everything that we do is really high quality. And I'll give you a couple of good examples. Uh, all our language schools are category one. So category all of them. All of them. So category one means the highest level, means you have work rights, you can work, uh, means the quality of education is the best in the country. So we only, to be part of Study Queenstown, you have to be category one. It's also good to talk about international students. Aaron was telling me that we received more than 50 or 60 international students last year. It's a very good point. So we have over we have 57 nationalities here last year. So we have students from all over the world, a lot of Europe, South America, Asia, all over. Uh, and that's a big selling point for us. It's like much cultural here. Yeah, it's yeah. really it really is. Yeah. And how do you see Queenstown in five years? Five years. So. The unique thing about Queenstown is we are doubling in size about every 15 years. Whoa. So we are just going, 15 years, we're going to double again. So Queenstown's growing very fast. The one amazing thing that everyone wants, locals, tourists, is to keep the beautiful nature around us. What kind of jobs these students can expect to have here? We've got one of the best places in the, in the whole of New Zealand to get employment. It's so easy to get jobs here. It depends what the student's level of English is and depends on their background skills. So minimum wage is $16.50 an hour um, and I would suggest a lot of students coming in with a bit of life experience can earn $20 an hour and everything from uh, just cleaning rooms, driving, uh, storage, packing, through to a lot of students end up progressing quite quickly through into assistant manager roles, front of house roles. So I'll give you a good example of employment possibilities here. In February this year, uh, we had, because um, we've got one of the lowest employment rates in the country, we desperately need workers. We had 300 people looking for jobs in February, which is really low. And we had one agency had 600 jobs going. Oh, yeah. So we have way, way more jobs than people. We desperately need workers. Cool. So. And what's the average living cost here in Queenstown? So the average living cost depends how the student wants to live. So there, there is some options. Um, yeah, there's halls of residence and you can rent a private house or rent a room. Um, and the average living cost, if you include rent, food and some transport, is maybe 250 to 300 a week. Even with the minimum salary, they can live here? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's all right. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. That's all right. Agora a gente vai voltar lá para Slack, que hoje é quarta-feira, toda quarta-feira tem o Job Search Club lá na escola. Bom, o Job Search Club é uma sessão da escola, como o Dani falou, toda quarta-feira a gente ensina o estudante a desenvolver o próprio currículo, carta de intenções, a própria cover letter, que é uma apresentação quando está procurando por, por trabalho. É, a gente te orienta também a gerar o IRD, que é o equivalente ao nosso CPF no Brasil. Então o IRD é um documento que precisa para trabalhar na Nova Zelândia. Abertura de conta do banco e direcionar.
what's the first step for students when they want to find a job here? So they, first of all, they have to get the right visa, working holiday visa, student visa with the rights, first step. Second step is to apply to the IRD, which is our tax department. Uh, I, I help them to do so. And then they need to get a bank account in New Zealand. And, uh, and then I help them to write their CV with the experience they've got, yes or no. And then I can help them to find the, a job in Queensland. What's the easiest way to find a job here? Sometimes I know availability, so I can help. Or the best way is to go door to door try to find a job this way. We've got lots and lots and lots of jobs available in Queenstown, hospitality, bars, restaurants, supermarkets. Um, never had any students, the streets not finding the jobs. We have the flexibility here at Slack to offer night classes or daytime classes. So if a student find a job daytime, he can move to our nighttime classes and it's good for them. Yeah. Or if they have a job in the evening, they can move to the daytime classes. We are very flexible. And the Job Search Club happens every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Essa daqui é a Bruna. E hoje ela vai procurar emprego em Princeton e a gente achou que seria uma boa ideia eu filmar ela enquanto ela tá procurando emprego. Bruno tem 24 anos e hoje eu vou procurar emprego aqui em Queenstown. <risos> oh my gosh! Estou morando em Queenstown tem um mês e eu esperei esse um mês para procurar emprego para poder conhecer melhor a cidade, me adaptar. Como eu vou estudar mais de 14 semanas, eu já tenho visto de trabalho e aí eu já posso procurar algo para me ajudar a pagar as contas. Como se procura emprego em Queenstown? Todos os lugares, quando eles estão contratando, tem o anúncio e eles estão precisando de pessoas para trabalhar e fica o anúncio e também tem o um jornalzinho que sai toda terça-feira. É, que é o Lakes Weekly, que chama. E esse jornal tem várias vagas de trabalho, fala sobre tudo que está acontecendo na cidade. Uma coisa bem legal também que tem nesse jornal é achados e perdidos. Você vê, Sim. tipo, a galera perde GoPro colar de ouro, tipo, várias <risos> coisas de valor que devem custar alguns mil dólares e falar que achou e está disponível na delegacia para a pessoa ir lá tirar. Exato. Aí você vai lá tirar. Se você não for em determinado período, a pessoa que achou é a pessoa que eles vão devolver. É, como foi bom comprar um crepe? O pessoal já estava dando dica de onde a gente pode procurar trabalho. A Patagônia está contratando e tem um hotel para ela contratando também. Depois de três horas. Três horas entregamos alguns currículos da Bruna. O pessoal é amigável, sempre fica sim, amigável. Sim. A melhor coisa para procurar um emprego é imprimir um monte de currículos, sai andando. E entrega em todo lugar possível. I'm looking que você for a job. <risos> Fala para todo mundo que está procurando trabalho. You're looking for a job. Yes. E é isso. Frio. O que, que você quer comer? I don't know. Ok, vamos descobrir. <risos> Oh, no. <laughs> you're not, you're not like